Hello everyone, my name is Lucian and I'm uh, from Cleveland, Ohio with IoT World. And today I have a pleasure to talk to the Chief Executive Officer of Trend Micro, uh, Eva Chen. She, since its inception in 1988, she has spearheaded uh, Trend Micro's emergence as one of the most innovative uh, content uh, security companies. Uh, she served as the company's uh, Vice President as well as the Chief Technology Officer and since 2004, she took over the, as uh, CEO. She has received many accolades, uh, many accomplishments. Uh, a few of the most prominent ones are the top 10 high-flying women in technology by V3 Magazine. Uh, she was named Forbes 50 Power uh, Businesswoman. Um, she has received the Cloud Security Alliance um, Award and named one of the 100 most influential executives in the industry by CRN. She was also named 50 most powerful people in networking by Network World, and uh, was named a top five women in vision, information security, and received a lifetime achievement award by Secure um, Computing. Welcome you from California. Thank you, Rujia, and hello, everybody. Good morning. All right, uh, welcome. Our audience is uh, industrial IoT focused, and uh, uh, essentially, as more uh, connect, more devices are getting connected as uh, cost of hardware, whether it's computing power for industrial world or sensors is approaching zero as the cost of extracting the data to, uh, to basically analyze that and a new, new business model are changing from a large capex expenditure to a, uh, a monthly credit card changing from a capex to an opex expenditure. Uh, I'd like to ask Eva, uh, what are some of the biggest security and challenges uh, as large um, um, companies are adopting the industrial Internet of Things? Yes, I think uh, industrial, uh, which we uh, call it the I IoT, the industrial IoT devices, um, there's always challenge when you adopt a new infrastructure. Those are availability. Um, scalability and security. For the uh, industrial organization or industrial operation, usually availability and the uh, scalability is not a problem for them because they've been implementing this type of uh, system for a long time. But security, especially cybersecurity, is really the new thing and the new threats, the new challenge that they need to uh, take care of. So a lot of time we often say IIoT is not just industrial IoT, it's the industrial operation system meets the IT information technology people. So I think um, the cybersecurity part, which is new and there's connection that you need to secure, there's information that you need to secure and there is uh, the data that you need to protect. Those are the important things that uh, the IIoT operation people need to take care of. Thank you for that. And can you help me and the audience uh, understand what is the difference between a threat, you talked about the threats in the industrial space, the vulnerability and the risk in the industrial uh, environment? The threats we usually talking about when you evaluate the risk versus the benefits, then uh, the threats is the factor that uh, might impact the whole system, right? And usually the threats take the uh, advantage of the system vulnerability. Most of the software is written by people. People make mistake, and therefore there are always some vulnerability code inside the software. When the industrial operating system starting to use this software um, and connecting to internet or sending data, the hackers might take advantage of this vulnerability or sometimes, pay, put it simple, it's like bugs in the code. Right. And they utilize this uh, uh, vulnerability to to initiate a cat, and that's the threats to the IoT environment. 
right? So there's uh, uh, people, technology, and processes that need to be talked. So now let's talk a little bit about the uh, trend micro strategy for the industrial IoT and the OT space, as you well uh, defined it earlier, the intersection of the uh, information technology with the operation technology, which uh, have, uh, you know, ultimate goal to to serve the shareholders, but yet uh, uh, on a day-to-day, -day they may, may focus on different things. Yes, uh, like you say, security is all about technology, product, and people process, right? So on the product technology side, Trend Micro has been investing this area for 30 years now. We, the Trend Micro is already a 30 years old company that we focus nothing else but security and threat defense, cyber threat defense. And therefore, our strategy in this uh, IIoT space is that we have a full stack of technology and product protecting the cloud, protecting the connection, protecting the data and the device itself. All three level, we have the protection. But on the business uh, um, strategy wise, we believe that we need to partner with the, uh, um, the operation center, whether it's the customer's operation center or it's the new breed that we call MSSP, Managed Service uh, Security Provider. These are the people that specialize in 24 hour security monitoring and now they, they want to include the IIoT into their security monitoring and reporting. And those are the partner that we are working with. Mm -hmm. So that way we can, we provide the best technology and product, we integrate with the infrastructure and then it will be operated by the uh, experts in the industry. Right, so as more and more companies are moving their data into the cloud for analysis, perhaps they're doing analysis on a shift or on a, on a day or on a work period on various machines or multi-plans. Yes. Uh, are there any special considerations for securing the data in the cloud? Oh, yes, definitely. The first thing I would say is uh, uh, in respect to the uh, recent uh, European GDPR, the General Data Protection Rules, I think one important thing is when you collect all this data, our advice is first, you must separate whenever there is a personal information inside those uh, log, you separate those personal uh, information and then make it into an encrypted database where you produce say a hash code to represent that person in the log. Instead of mixing this personal information with all the activity logs together, which is very dangerous. And you separate them, both, both of them out. And then you utilize all this, um, the log data to have the general train of what you want to see. Say um, you want to detect the anomalies and um, you see what is the train going on and there's something abnormal happening or you is those general data. Once you identify, then you might want to go back and check what, who, which device happened to produce this. But in the general analysis, you must separate those identity with the general log data. That way you can protect your data much better. I think the recent Facebook incidents, right. people or if you, if you collect all this personal information together with their uh, activity, you run a big risk of the data protection. Gotcha. Thank you for that. And as we look at, at our audience that's focused particularly on the uh, uh, industrial space, so can, can we uh, talk about some of the measures that uh, industrial organizations can, can take from the data security risk associated with the vendors or third parties uh, tools that uh, they may be rushing to to adopt, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, it, it used to be uh, only a few large industrial players that was collecting data from the industrial plants. Now, mm -hmm. it, 
seems like there's cluster of new players entering with new business model and makes it attractive for companies to try whether it's from a predictive uh, maintenance or predictive analytics uh, uh, perspective. Uh, so can you talk about some of the measures that some of the organizations can, can take to protect themselves? Um, like I say, this uh, IIoT actually involved in several layer of protection. If um, there's cloud, there's a network, there's devices. So allow me to uh, separate them three layer to talk about this, what they need to do. First, if they are using the third party cloud to protect, to, to operate their uh, IIoT, definitely ask from the cloud provider their security implementation. How do they operate? Which zone do they operate? Because usually they have the uh, countries uh, specific uh, that are they need to uh, comply with. And um, uh, especially, I believe that those in the cloud data that people need to run some server-based protection because hacker usually take take advantage of the server, including Linux systems uh, vulnerability. And therefore, they need to make sure that their cloud provider are well protecting their server infrastructure, as well as the compliance to the data protection um, um, rules in the specific area. Then on the network area, on the network area, usually there is a gateway that collecting all the data from the devices and send it out. On that gateway, the IIoT gateway, we recommend two things. One, on the network layer, they should implement a new generation or we call it next generation IPS, intrusion prevention system. Usually before people think uh, all these data are internal traffic and therefore they did not put in the intrusion prevention system they need to now monitor and um, detect the attack from this so-called east-west traffic. And second, in this gateway, usually they have a control center which issue the command to all the different devices. On that control center is the most critical place they should implement some hardening technology. Make sure those uh, control center won't have some malware injection or hackers taking control of the control center. That's on the network layer. On the device layer, because usually these um, IIoT devices, they are buying from different vendor, different components, and uh, therefore our advice is they must ask the vendor about how they implement their uh, transmission, information transmission and data collection um, technology, how they implement that. Uh, um, for instance, Trend Micro mm -hmm. do provide in-device security. We have the security API for mm -hmm. the device maker to integrate into the device and using those uh, uh, security agent we were able to monitor if there's any uh, anomaly um, activity happening in the in the device, and uh, we can stop those. Or the, whenever there's vulnerability, we can very actively notify the the user that your device is containing this component and this component have mm -hmm. this type of uh, vulnerability that you need to take care of. Right. So can you expand a little bit on a device type of security when, when you call, just for our audience, when you refer to a device that could be a controller, uh, that could be a sensor, just a little bit of expansion on to what you refer to as a, as a device. Okay, a device can be anything such as a IP camera. Inside is actually a small, you can call it a small PC that was controlling the data collection or the picture of the stream and there's operating system in there and those devices need to be protected. Or um, there is some uh, smart meter. Those are devices, right? Smart meter in the smart grid, they are sure. collecting for the usage. So 
nowadays IIoT include a lot of different devices in order like uh, agriculture devices or truck, connected car. These are all, we can say, the device out there that contain all this IIoT. Thank, thank you for that. A lot of the conversations uh, I've had over the last 14 months since uh, we've been engaged with the industrial IoT platform to uh, have people kind of share their visionary, uh, their vision, their stories, uh, their success story mm-hmm. case studies around whether it's an agriculture or a smart plant and so on. A lot of the security conversation happens only at the network. So I appreciate uh, you uh, drilling deeper into the device level and, and some of the options available for the audience to, to make sure they are secure and make sure that it's not just a checkbox. It's, a, it's, it's something that's yes. done as a project one time, but it's a routine as you well have summarized it uh, there. So thank you for that. Um, so what are some of the key areas, uh, let's say an industrial player, when thinking about security in OT environment uh, uh, should, should consider uh, doing that? So from the operational technology perspective, so this is moving on to the folks that are in charge of keeping the machines running, keeping the plant running. Yes, uh, I think uh, originally there's always an operation uh, center that the companies uh, have and our advice is that we think that operation center they should have a security operation center because this type of a uh, cyber or digital security is a very specialized area and you need to start to uh, watch not just the availability not just the, the scalability but also the attack and therefore uh, implement a cyber security operation center and recruit those uh, security expertise that can understand this type of attack and take quick action would be a very good practice to do. We see a lot of company now are especially smaller company that are making this type of devices. They, they the lack of this type of uh, knowledge, but they eager to collect too much of the, this data into their, their hands. And uh, we will really uh, advise, and we are working with some MSSP partner, like I previously mentioned, maybe this um, uh, device maker, or um, they should consider work with this uh, MSSP, managed security service providers, yeah. mm-hmm. to provide this type of uh, security monitoring. Thank you for that, Eve. Uh, Eva, thank you uh, for uh, you for tuning in, uh, the audience. Uh, so you've heard some great feedback on best practices around uh, in, uh, securing the industrial IoT, securing the operational uh, side, so industrial control cybersecurity, straight from the uh, uh, CEO of uh, Trend Micro, who's been doing this for 30 years and well recognized uh, globally. Uh, Tune in for more information uh, live from future conferences such as the uh, Hanover uh, Mesa Show and IoT World. Thank you for tuning. Have a great weekend.